we bless your name king of kings and lord of lords we bless your name and lord this morning we surrender our hearts we present our hearts upon your altar that you will deal with our hearts O oh lord as you would please that you would instruct our hearts as you would please that you will perform a surgical work in our hearts as you would please that at the end of the day that which remaineth will be true and pure unto you lord this is our heart cry let your, your your spirit grant all trans this morning in the name of jesus abba father we thank you be thou exalted lord in the name of jesus we have prayed amen and amen hallelujah glory be to jesus yeah, and so this morning we want to start our journey from first corinthians chapter 10 from verse 1. the scripture says moreover brethren i would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto moses into the in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was christ but with many of them god was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted so the scripture talks about a generation of israelites that left egypt you know god delivered them from bondage and the scripture began to enumerate that they had different encounters that, as it were they experienced different manifestations of god and the hand of the lord and then the scripture says that you know they were taken out of egypt they passed through the sea the moving out of Egypt is a type of salvation that we experience in the now. The passing through the Red Sea, a type of baptism. So we, we see that the Israelites underwent all of these experiences. And they, the scripture said they had different manifestations. The rock followed them as it were, and they drank out of that rock. And, and you know, the scripture calls that rock the Christ. And all manner of things, blessedness that they experienced on their journey. But the scripture says that, but with many of them god was not well pleased so it means that even though they had all these experiences even though they were together in church as it were there were people that god was not well pleased with god was not well pleased with them and verse 6 says that it was because of the lust that was in their hearts he says in verse 6 now these things were our examples so we have the examples in the life of the israelites so they have become our example so that we do not go after the same things that they went after and you know that made god not to be pleased with them so he says that these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lost them the israelites had lost that manifested in different ways in their lives murmurings and not believing god and talking you know against god and all of that and all of that so their loss was made manifest in different dimensions and there is a loss that is in the mind of believers currently and that loss is that we are seeking after the gifts and not the giver the loss in the hearts of many believers is that we are only following god because of what he has to offer as it were because of the benefits because of the miracles because of the healings so at the very core of our hearts we are not following god because of god we are following him because of his gifts we are following him because there is a lust in our hearts that we want to satisfy so many are not following after god for god but for the miracles god can perform for the gifts that is desire from god so our strivings our sacrifices our prayers our worship our giving all of them are connected to the lust of our hearts if you really see your heart and ask yourself core questions why am i following god you will find out that at the end of the day you would arrive at oh many persons let me not say you are many persons would arrive at oh it is because of what i have to get from god and so god wants to deal with this lust of the heart this morning and so i have titled the message users of god for several generations there are people who have fallen into this this group that we can call the users of god people who are not really following god for god but following him because of what they stand to benefit from him and so the israelites had it on their journey they had this lost on their journey to, you know towards canaan 
and so any any little thing that did not go well they will begin to murmur any difficulty they will begin to murmur why because their heart was just after what god could give them as a matter of fact the scripture says in psalm 103 he said he made known his acts unto the israelites unto the children of israel but he made known his ways unto moses so the israelites did not have did not know the ways of the father they only knew his acts they did not know the ways of god they only knew his acts so they were only following after because of the miracles of the hand of God. They were only fo following after because of the gifts of the hand of the Lord. And so when it seemed as though there was a little challenge or, or something that happened on the way, they would turn back and murmur against God and say, it is better that we were in Egypt. Once upon a time in their journey, they gather and say, let us make a leader for our ourselves and let us go back to Egypt. Because we don't know what this God is doing as it were. We don't actually know where he is leading us to. He has brought us out of Egypt so that we can die in this wilderness. And so their hearts were still lusting after the things of Egypt. So generations after generation, there have been this loss in the hearts of men because there is, you know, every man, we have our needs, right? And so when we find a person that can meet that need, we can slide into that, into that place whereby we begin to follow the person just because of the needs he's meeting. And so in the time of Jesus, we also see people that followed after Jesus because of the bread he was giving, because of the miracles he was doing. Matthew chapter 4, the last two verses, talked about how Jesus healed and then his fame spread abroad, you know, ab abroad all Syria. And people began to bring all manner of sick people, you know, and they came and Jesus healed them. And then chapter 5 and verse 1 says that Jesus, seeing the multitudes, he climbed up the mount. And the scripture says, then his disciples gathered unto him and he began to teach. The disciples there is not only the 12 apostles, right? But I can assure you that it was not all of the multitudes that made that journey up the mount. It was not that multitude that made the journey up the mount. So when he climbed up and sat, he said his disciples came to him. When a rabbi sits, he's sitting to teach. And so many people will look at, ah, Jesus wants to teach. Ah, oh, ah, I have one appointment. Let me go and, you know, do this one and they will leave. Let me go and do that one and they will leave. So they saw that right now he's not about to do some miracles. He's not about to heal the sick. He's not about to, you know, to provide bread. Oh, so let us go our, our, our duty. So they were following only because of the bread that he had to offer. And as a matter of fact, John will say that Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew the hearts of men. Because they were following after the bread. They were following after the bread. And so Jesus did not commit himself to them. So the people that follow after the bread cannot, God cannot commit himself, his ways unto them. If your heart is still after the bread and the bread alone, Jesus cannot commit himself to you. You will not know the Lord. You will not come to know his ways. You will not handle the mysteries of the kingdom. You will not come into that level of intimacy with God because your heart is far from him. And so generations after generations, we have seen people that followed after the Lord because of the things he had to offer, because of his, of his benefits, his gifts. And so the question becomes, why are you really following the Lord? Why are you really serving the Lord? Why are you really, you know, giving? Why are you really making sacrifices in church? Why are you really doing that one, doing that one? Is it really because you love the Lord? Or is it because of the benefits you stand to gain? You can ask yourself this question, if all the benefits are taken away, and God just wants you to serve Him because you love Him, just serve me. Just, you know, go for soul winning, evangelism. Reach out to people. Give to the church for the furtherance of the kingdom. Give to, you know, those in need. Give that one, that one. And there is no benefit whatsoever attached. Would you still be able to do the things you are currently doing? That's how you will know what is powering your actions. That's how you will know if your actions are being powered by the lust of your heart or they are being powered by the love for God. What is powering your actions? So he said, these people experienced diverse things, but God was not pleased with them. So many are in the church, but God is not pleased with them. Yes, God loves everybody, but it doesn't mean that God takes pleasure in everybody. God is not pleased with, the, with their ways. And so, what is your motivation? Why are you following God? The painful thing is that when we follow God just because of the bread, we will not get into Canaan. We will not get into the place of rest where we would, where, you know, that land flow with, with milk and honey. We will have the, you know, the things by the roadside, but we will not get the core of the blessing. Because the many that, that lost it in the wilderness, they all perished in the wilderness. It was as though God cleared that flesh, that gener generation of flesh, and raised a new breed that entered into the blessedness that God had in store for them. So at the end of the day, the people that pursue 
that pursue after the benefits you know in god after the gifts in god after the hand of the lord they do not enter the fullness of the blessedness that god has yes and canaan is not heaven actually so when i say canaan i'm not talking about heaven is canaan is, is like the the fullness of the blessing where you enter into rest where you enter into great faith and rest and you enter the fullness of god's blessings and so the people that pursue after that follow after god just for his gifts do not get into canaan it is those that follow god because of god that actually find themselves at the end of the day they find themselves in the land of canaan and so the question still is why are you following after god in the place of worship and prayers why do you come to worship why do you come to pray why do you come to seek after the lord why do you go to church is it is it just because of the things you stand to gain at the core of your motivation is it what you stand to benefit so a generation can seek after the lord not because of the transformations he is bringing to them but because of the <laughs> transformation of their bank accounts you are not seeking god for your transformation you are only seeking god for the transformation of your bank account meanwhile the goal of god is to transform us and change us into the image of his son he said that the ones he has called he has ordained to be to conform to the image of his son jesus but many do not follow after god they may there are many in church today that are not in church because they are seeking a transformation into the likeness of jesus no that they are seeking something to accrue to them in their bands they are seeking you know you know success in their careers they are seeking they have heard that god can put his blessing upon a man and then his business would boom they are seeking and they have come to seek after the lord that can prosper them in their businesses not the god that can transform them in their lives and so you have many untransformed souls in church because their hearts are not truly after the lord you seek his hand but never his heart you seek his hand but never his heart this is a call to reflect what exactly why exactly rather why exactly am i seeking after the lord what is my motivation what is the core of my motivation and like i said earlier the question to ask is if a all the benefits are taken away would i still do what i'm doing would i still follow god dispassionately is are your motives pure are your motives pure are your motives pure so there is an order on the mount of transfiguration that is instructive to us in the book of luke chapter 9 i believe luke chapter 9 verse maybe 27 28 29 the scripture says that he took three of his disciples and they ascended that mount and then jesus began to pray hmm. jesus began to pray the same prayers that we make every day jesus began to pray and the scripture says that and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance began to change and then his garments followed subsequently the scripture did not say that as he began to pray his garments began to change he said the fashion of his countenance so our seeking after the lord there is an order god wants to change our countenance first but us we want him to change our garments first and so we are following him our prayers our worship our service is all because we want our garments to change we want the the, the artwork the, the garment talks about the artwork the artwork the artwork things the business the career the family all manner of things that, that is external to us we want them to change we want god to touch our our garment but he, we don't want him to touch our being our countenance but the scripture says that his countenance you know was 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 altered and then his garments began to change that is the sequence of transformation that god seeks to bring to us but sometimes our lust will not allow us our motives will not allow us to seek this pattern this order of transformation that first of all we are changed into his image and then all, all that all, all other things will follow after us so jesus began to change in his countenance and then his garments followed suit that is the order that is the order what are you seeking after it's a time to reflect in your givings why do you give i've talked about in your worship in your prayers in your you know in the other things you do <laughs> that you know in the in the outward it will be like oh this person is oh oh bless you bless you bless you you are doing well you are pursuing god well you are falling after him you are always where jesus is but the question is why are you always there why are you always there if there is nothing to gain will you be always will you always be there what are the motives of your heart in your givings do you give simply because of what you stand to receive so the only reason you give is because you are expecting a massive harvest you know good measure pressed down shaking together <laughs> and so it becomes your motivation for giving and so when we take away the good measure Press down, shaking together, and, and we say there is no more good measure. Press down, shaking together. Will you still give? What is your motivation? Do you still have the loss in your heart? 
tied to the things you can receive from God and not really God himself? Is your heart still tied to what you stand to gain? What you stand to receive from the Lord physically? Not really that you are following God because of God. Is your motivation for giving the promotions that you will get you know, in your workplace, the breakthroughs? You know, all manner of testimonies we hear, which are powerful testimonies. Oh, I gave to this project and then my business has, has grown in leaps and bounds. Powerful testimony. But what is the motivation of the heart? What is the motivation of the heart? What is the motivation of the heart? If we take away the, the powerful breakthroughs, will you still do what you are doing? One of the things that God wants giving, giving to do, like giving, is to break the hold of mammon on the heart of the believer. So, God designed it in such a way that the more you give, the more the hold of mammon is broken from your heart. That's, the, that's one of the designs in giving. So, the more you give, the more you, you turn away from the, from the greed in the heart. You turn away from the love of money. So, that's meant to be a pattern in the kingdom. That as you let go of your possessions, you let go of greed. You let go. You know, money no longer has a hold on your heart. Greed no longer has a hold on your heart. That's what God, one of the things God designed giving to do. But the enemy, subtly, the devil, subtly, he has turned it around. So that giving now enforces the love of money. Giving enforces the hold of mammon on our hearts. Why? Because we have changed it and then we are expecting, we give because we are expecting more. And so our hearts are now more tied to money. Instead of being loosed from the bands of money. From the bondage of money rather. So you see what the enemy is doing. So that which God has put in place to refine you has become a medium through which you are kept in more bondage to the flesh. That's what it does. But can we return to the purity of giving? Can we return to the purity of seeking after God? Do you know something about the devil? Once he knows that, oh, it's just about the, the gifts, he will just allow you. So in all your mind, you will think, ah, I'm following God, I'm doing well with God. But <laughs> the devil knows that it's just, it's just ephemeral, ephemeral things that you are after you are not after the core and so he would allow you to be in church and then be getting the gifts and then you think you are doing well not knowing that your heart is far from god not knowing that god is not well placed with you just as he was not with the israelites the purity of giving is that we give whatever form of giving that we do whether it be offerings whether it be tithes and i hear that you know <laughs> there is now the, the battle against tithes and, and, and all that we are not arguing about tithing it's not the new testament thing you know the believers in the in the beginning they gave their all they didn't pay tithe they just gave and all of that one of the things that is making people happy <laughs> is that it is releasing them from the cord that have been binding them to the altar as it were because i began to ask myself everybody is talking about the you know the, the, the first believers how they gave their all and my question becomes how many have apportioned percentages of their of all their income and say every money that comes into my hand this percentage is going for charity this percentage is going to giving to the church this percentage is going to this one going to that one this one is for my own welfare this one is for my own um, project savings how many have have allotted percentages <laughs> how many have done that so what they are only after is that oh we have been freed from the cord the only cord that is making us give and now we are now free it shows the lust in the hearts of men it shows the lust in the hearts of men. So I'm not even here to argue whether it is a New Testament thing or not. It is just showing the lust in our hearts. So the, the, the purity of giving, the purity of seeking the Lord must return to the church. The purity of seeking the Lord must return. Where we are seeking out of love, not because of what we stand to gain. Where we are giving out of love and out of, you know, there, there, is, there is a need that needs to be met. And we give out of love, not because of what we stand to gain. So because we love God, not because we seek a reward. Is it wrong to expect a reward in, in, you know, in giving? No, it is not. Is it wrong to ask God to you know, remember your sacrifices in your times of need? I don't think so. You know, Hezekiah would turn to the, to the world and say, Lord, remember. So I don't think it's wrong. But what is wrong is when it becomes your motivation for doing it. When it becomes your the, the core of your motivation, I am giving only because I am looking for an expect for, for a reward. So if we give out of love, the reward will come and we can expect the reward to come. But the motivation is not lost. The motivation is not the reward. The motivation is that I love God and I give. I love God and I seek Him. I love God and I, 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 I seek for the expansion of the kingdom. 
you know, good enough and it is fair, you know, pastors will motivate people, you know, with the benefits and, and that's all good. But may we never be tied to the benefits. So you hear things like, okay, when you win souls, God will, will prosper you and all of that. Fine, good motivation. But may it never lead you to begin to tie these pure things to, to your lust. Let our seekings be purified. What do you seek? And I will end by reading John chapter 1. What do you really seek? That's the core question this morning. What do you really seek? John chapter 1 verse 35 to 42. Quickly, I will just run through that scripture. The scripture says that, um, again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and Jesus is turning to many of us this morning, and saw them following, following and what said unto them, do you seek? You've heard the announcement, behold the Lamb of God, and you're following after Jesus. Jesus has turned this morning, and he's saying to you, what do you seek? Do you seek after the miracles? That's what I think he was asking them. Do you seek after the miracles on the streets? Or do you seek after the intimacy in the chambers? And their response was, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where do you dwell? In other words, we want to be with you. We want to stay with you. We are not after the miracles that happens by the roadside. We want to know your dwelling. We want to come and stay with you and abide with you. Hmm. What a purity of seeking. We want to know you. Beyond seeing you on the streets and, you know, enjoying the miracles and the bread. We want to know where do you dwell, that we may come and stay with you, that we may come and have an encounter with you. What do you seek? What do you seek? What really do you seek? And the scripture says, he said unto them, come and see. So Jesus would always invite you in. When your desire is pure, you would always encounter the Lord. The Lord does, ne does not never turn his back on those that seek him. He said, when you seek the Lord, you will find him if you seek with all of your heart. So when God sees that there is purity in your seeking, he will make himself manifest unto you. So could it be that you have not handled as it were the Lord because your heart is not pure in seeking after him? Could it be that the reason you have not handled the things of God is because there is no purity in your seeking? Could it be that there is an element of lust in your heart and that is the reason you have not found God? That's the reason you have not touched the realities of God. Could it be that there is a lust in our hearts that is making us not to find the Lord? So he told them, come and see. Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day. For it was about the tenth hour. So they had hours of, you know, interaction, abiding, communion, fellowship. Verse 40 says, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, blah, 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 blah. So he said, we have found the Messiah. <laughs> we have found the Messiah. You don't find the Messiah by miracles. You find him by intimacy. You find him by the purity of your seeking. He said, we have found. There was something that happened all through that night that made them know this one, no, this one, not by the hand of the ears. This one, we have found him. We know that he is the Messiah. He is the Christ. We have found the Messiah. We have found him. Because their hearts sought in purity. What do you really seek? Why do you do the things you do? Why do you wake up and pray? Why do you study? Why do you serve in church? Why do you give offerings, tithes, givings to the um, you know, to meet the need, all manner of givings? Why do you do them? Why do you fast? Why do you pray? Why? Is it really because of the Lord or because of what your heart is lost in after? Is it because of your business, just for your business, just for the externals? Do you really follow the Lord because of the Lord himself? Have you left the giver and you are now running after the gifts? Have you left the one who is the reward and you are running around for the, the little, little things that come? The Lord is meant to be our reward. That we have the Lord is meant to be enough. You are, I will be your exceedingly great reward. So when the Lord offers himself as our reward, we are meant to take him, take him. He is our reward. And embrace our reward. So don't leave your reward and be look and be seeking for gifts. Embrace your reward because in your reward, eventually you will find yourself in your Canaan. What do you seek? What do you seek? Can you go to, go to the Lord in prayer this morning? Can we go to the Lord in prayer? Can we go to the Lord in prayer? Ah, there's a song that says, Change my heart, oh Lord. Make it ever true. 
Change my heart, oh Lord, may I be like you. Change my heart, oh Lord, make it ever true. Make it ever true that my pursuit will be true, will be you and you alone. Let it not be infiltrated. Let it not, not have all manner of infiltrations and impurities. Let my pursuit of God be pure. Change my heart, oh Lord. May I be like you. Can you cry to the Lord this morning? And ask Him for a transformation of heart. That your motivation, your motivation for seeking Him will be Him. It will not be the bread on the streets. It will not be the miracles on the streets. That the core of your pursuit of God will be God. The love for God. Oh, change our hearts, oh God. Change our hearts, oh God. Help us, Abba Father. May we not be users of God. Many are in the church who are users of God. Users of God. Users of God. Users. They just want to use God. They don't want to know God. They just want to use God. Let God meet their needs. Let Him serve their purposes. Users of God everywhere. Can you say, Lord, may I not be a user of you? Lord, take me out of that mode. Hey, take me out of that bondage. Take me out of that mode. Let me not be a user of you. Let me be a true seeker of you. Let my heart truly seek after you. Let my heart truly long after you. I say, Purify our hearts, O God. Ah, yes, purify our hearts, O God. Purify our hearts, O God. We surrender our hearts upon your surgical table. Lord, that you would cut away everything that is not of you. Every motivation that is not you, cut it away, O Lord. Oh, these are the people that will survive no matter the terrain they find themselves in. Moses knew the ways of God and so he did not join in murmuring after the Lord. He knew the ways of God. If you don't know God, when you get into, you know, uh, undulating terrains, you will cause God and die. I'm telling you. You will say things like, God, if you don't do this one by this time, I am going back to, the, to Egypt. Those, those, are, those are carnal words. Words that, that, that are uttered by carnal believers, carnal people. If you don't do this one, I am going back to where I, I came from. What? What was what, that? Time say, Lord, purify my motives. Purify my seekings. Purify my heart. Let me follow you because of you. This is my desire. This is my desire. This is my desire. Walk in our hearts, so God. Walk in our hearts, so God. Walk in our hearts, so God. Let us do the things we do because we love you. Not because we seek a reward. The, re the rewards will come. But Lord, let our hearts not be on the rewards. May the reward, may the gifts, may the rewards of the things we do not become our motivation. Because you can start well. But in the journey, when you begin to receive the rewards, you now begin to tie your things to the rewards. You can start well, but subtly, gently, you start debating. Lord, preserve us in the right way. Preserve us in the right way. That we will journey to Canaan. We will journey to the place of the full manifold manifestation of your blessedness. We will journey to Canaan and we will enter Canaan in the name of Jesus. Abba Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen and amen.